So basically, I wish you on this special day, uh, which is the International Women's Health Day. Okay. And the theme for International Women's Health Day uh, will focus on mobilizing in critical times of threats and opportunities. And this emphasizes empowering women to make decisions independently, free from coercion and discrimination. So this is something, uh, you know, we actually call today as the International Day of Action for Women's Health. So basically, we want to educate our women so that they are empowered to make their own decisions without being influenced or without um, being under stress so that they make a positive change to their health. So that is what, you know, we are looking uh, in this episode. All right. So with this in mind, we decided to speak about a specific topic, which is about breast health, because we hardly concentrate about breast health uh, in a general, in a generalistic view. We don't really talk about, uh, you know, what are the changes that are happening? What are the problems? Some people, you know, do not want to discuss this in a regular visit. So we thought we would probably, and we all are aware that breast cancer is the number one uh, killer of women in our country, followed by cervical cancer. So we definitely want to make sure that these women are aware of certain changes so that they can discuss with their clinician or doctor about some changes which sometimes may be sinister and may cause problems to their health. All right. So with this uh, brief introduction, I would want to uh, welcome my panelists and I would request them to introduce themselves, they can say their names and what they are doing and I mean their profession as well as where they are from. Pavitra, gotai talama, nivu kanar dal helbe ka gate, nim hesro ni velinda matar taidira, mathe ni ven mar taidiranta. So I'll call your names and you can introduce yourself and then we will quickly start with the session. All right. So uh, I have my, I can see Kezia first. So, uh, good morning, Kezia. Can you introduce yourself? Ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. How good are you? Morning. I'm fine. Tell me. Well, my name is Kezia. And I've uh, been associated with Dr. Revdi, ma'am, for almost 10 years or more than that. And uh, it gives me immense pleasure and joy to be associated with you, ma'am. Thank you. What do you do, Kezia? I work as an HR consultant. I work for oh, a private. Good. I work from home. Okay. And, and where are you? Two of my kids. All right. So where are you put up in Bangalore? Which area? I live in Kalyan Nagra. Okay. Very nice. So Kezia has been a very, uh, what should I say, very favorite associate of mine. I delivered her two children, Smile and Shail, the way I call them. And uh, she has always participated in all the activities of Mirror Health. And she definitely wants to contribute to the community uh, to improve, uh, you know, on or to contribute to the discussions regarding uh, anything related to women's health. Okay, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Next, Thank I can you, see Girija. Uh, Girija is my very recent associate. Girija, good morning. Good morning. And and she has been very, very enthusiastic. She asks a lot of questions, even when she meets me for her regular visits. So now she's decided to join in to contribute her questions on breast health. So Girija, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Myself, it's Girija. Actually, previously I was working as a assistant teacher. Now I am just a homemaker from past one and a half year, one year. And this is the first time like I am attending like the sessions. So I hope it will be the best for me. Very nice. So the homemaker is a very difficult thing, uh, Girija. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> rather than working outside, being in the house, it's difficult. And women can do, they are multifaceted, so they can work yeah. at, they can work outside. 
And yeah. yes, I mean, congratulations for, uh, you know, taking part in this discussion. Then I see Pavitra. Pavitra. Good morning, Pavitra. Good morning. ಅವರು ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ವಿಷಯಕ್ಕೂ ನನ್ನ ಹತ್ರ ಕನ್ಸಲ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಶೀಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹರ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶೀಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಡೆಡ್ ಟು ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬಳ್ಳಾರಿ ಕಂಗ್ರಾಚುಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಪವಿತ್ರ ದೆನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ರಂಜನಿ ಹಾಯ್ ರಂಜನಿ ಹಲೋ ಮಾಮ್ ಹೆಂಗಿದ್ದೀರಾ ನಾನು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನೀವ್ ಹೆಂಗಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಹಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಸೊ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಲಿ ಇವತ್ತು ಬ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ನಡೀತಾ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ uh hello all i'm ranjani uh, presently i i stay in uh, rajachinagar my husband's house in rajachinagar so uh, now i'm a homemaker because i have a uh, seven months kid uh, recently delivered a uh, baby boy so presently i'm not working after uh, after uh, once he completes one year i i have to look forward for a uh, job so basically you're working at home you don't say you're not working okay okay all right so next is i can see archana archana good morning archana has been my i think my oldest associate in this group even before kesia so uh, archana can you introduce i delivered her baby and uh, she's been like constantly in touch with me and i met her yesterday and asked her to join in and uh, she instantaneously agreed and she's got an important career profile yes archana can you can you introduce yourself hi hi yes yes good morning dr revati good morning everybody uh, yes i have been associated for 17 years with dr revati and it's been a wonderful journey and it is going to continue to be one uh, i am currently associated with bajaj i am a senior uh, territory manager there uh, but uh, with mirror health i have great uh, experiences and a lot of expectations also so i am going to be with dr revati uh, grow together with her thanks for being there always it means a lot thank you so much for joining in archana and then of course my very very, very favorite acquaintance aishwarya uh, aishwarya has i have delivered her two babies uh, janani and uh, harshini correct aishwarya harini and harshini harini and Ash- i always remember this janani name anyway <laughs> so aishwarya has been in touch with me from i think 2009 onwards yes aishwarya yes doctor. yes doctor okay so in fact she joined in she did have uh, you know she i think met with some kind of a uh, she had some small injury but then she did definitely wanted to contribute to the program and i really congratulate her that in spite of all the uh, you know disturbances she has managed to join in and kudos to you aishwarya and thank you doctor my pleasure aishwarya yeah i'm aishwarya jagannathan i've been associated with doctor since uh, 2009 and uh, as she said she had delivered both my babies my association will definitely continue with her for the rest of my life Very I'm nice. a homemaker. I'm based in Jalali Cross, Bangalore. Okay. So I think we have uh, people from across Bangalore and one from Bellari also. So first of all, the intent and the motivation to join in this program uh, gives me that happiness. All right. So before we actually start a discussion, I have a small capsule from Dr. Govind Rajan, uh, who is the chief radiologist and director of Mirror Health. And he does a lot of work on breast imaging. I'm sure all of you are introduced to him because he actually scanned your babies and he also took care of your uh, health in terms of scanning your uterus and everything else. But apart from this, he does a lot of work on breast imaging. This is something that Dr. Govind Rajan, who ha- also heads the department of uh, onco imaging at Apollo Hospitals, Manergata Road, and he does a lot of women's imaging in Mirror Health along with me. Now, uh, I would request my admin, Shrikant, to play this 
YouTube video, which he has recorded only for this session. And he will be talking about breast cancer screening and imaging. This is something that is very, very important that all of you should know. And this recording of today will be circulated to about 1,700 contacts of ours. These are all patients who have been with me, who have delivered with me, or who have had some problems which are kind of resolved after you know consultation uh, at Mirror Health. So it's a, it's a big thing. I mean, it's, it will not be restricted only to six of us or seven of us. It's going to go in for thousand, go in uh, two thousand seven hundred families, which is a huge. Uh, I feel it's a very impactful session. All right, Shrikant, can you please play that YouTube video for us? This is this was premiered only for today. A very special video to all our associates regarding breast imaging and cancer screening by Dr. Govind Rajan. Can you all hear? You're not no, able doctor. to hear? No, it's right. not. No. Okay, yeah. fine, fine. Sorry. Uh, we will try to host it. Uh, just give me some time. Shrikant? Uh, I think we should play it from here only. Can you all hear now? On this occasion of the International Women's yes, Day, yes, I want to wish sure. all of you about a very important disease affecting the women across the globe, that is breast cancer. Breast cancer is one of the most common cancers affecting women across the globe, and the incidence prevalence is significantly increasing in the Asian population. The most worrying aspect of this is that the Asian women, particularly the Indian women, are affected a little earlier than their counterparts, the West. Also, the disease affecting the Indian women is also more aggressive, mainly because it is diagnosed relatively late the disease course. On this occasion, I want to inform all the women out here that in spite of this grave scenario, it is still possible to have curative treatment for this very disease. Like most of the other cancers, early detection is one of the very, very important factors in combating this disease. When I talk about early detection, it has to be detected even before it is presented to the patient. For this, there are a few techniques 
Number one is self-pressed examination. This is a technique of examining one's own breasts by the person with the own person, and it has to be done systematically. Person needs to learn this technique by a doctor or by a practicing nurse. Most of the early diagnosis happens when the breast self-examination detects small tumor in the breast. Apart from this, there are different screening tests for breast cancer. Most commonly used are mammography, I mean the digital mammography, and ultrasound. The breast is also called so Now, the recommendation for women is annual mammography with or without ultrasound after the age of 40 years. That is a recommendation for all women irrespective of whether they have symptoms or not. Of course, if the patient, if the woman develops some symptoms, even before the age of 40, he has to come for a checkup. Of course, that's not for screening, it is a diagnostic tool. Apart from mammography, we also have something called MRI. Generally, if a woman falls into the category of high risk for developing breast cancer, when I say high risk, the woman has got a first degree relative who suffered from breast cancer, or a woman who's, who has a BRCA 1 and 2 mutation positivity, or a woman who had radiation directly given to the chest for some other cancers, maybe earlier in the brain. These are women who fall into the category of high risk. In these women, the screening starts at the age of 25 years of age. That is 25 years, you start mammography for the ultrasound and MRI for screening. With these techniques, it is possible to identify most of the very early cancers and the moment we identify tumors in the breasts or imaging, we go for diagnostic tests, that is either biopsy or surgery. If it is biopsy, well, that means the lesion is, the, the tumor is seen on imaging, like either, see, uh, either ultrasound or mammography or MRI, and not palpable, then an image guided biopsy is recommended. Once the biopsy is performed, they do further tests on the sample to identify what type of breast cancer it is. Then the staging happens, that is, once the cancer is diagnosed, we have to identify whether the tumor or the cancer is limited only to the breast or it is spread beyond the breast, like the glands or the lungs or in the bones, brain, liver, etc. So once this staging is done, appropriate therapy or, or appropriate treatment can be planned for the patient. However, higher the stage, poor is the power. And hence, the take-home message is early detection, better results. For early detection, you have to go for self-breast examination and annual mammography screening of the result. Uh, I think we actually um, went through this very important capsule and I wanted to play this first before we actually started our discussion and that is mainly because we did not want to miss this important message. Uh, I also want to you know, start asking questions and then I will give you important information in between. The summary of this whole thing is it's very important for all women to know how to do breast self-examination. If you're not able to do it yourself or you have a suspicion, please reach out to your doctor or, or a practicing nurse who will be able to guide you. And I will explain to you in detail how to do breast self-examination. 
in case you come across something like a lump in any portion of the breast or the areola, okay, that is the blackish area near the nipple, then it is very important that you get it evaluated. Generally, the recommendation says that every woman internationally has to get a mammography done once in a year after they are 40. In our country, it is not usually followed very strictly, but at least if you think that you have somebody like a family relative who's had a breast cancer or somehow you know that you are genetically prone because of certain genes like BRCA1 and 2, which can predispose you to breast cancer. Or if there is a lady who has taken radiation very early in her life, because I, I came across a lady, uh, in fact, I delivered her also, who had actually taken radiation to her chest because of some kind of a tumor, and this can predispose her to breast cancer. In these situations... Screening, it doesn't mean that that lady has cancer, but screening always happens in a normal population who may be hosting the disease but may not be symptomatic. In these individuals, we start screening as early as 25 years of age. So we use digital mammography in them and we also use MRI along with it. In the reproductive age group, that is between 25 to 40 years, if there is a lump, we generally do not... Uh, look at mammography first. We would want to do a sonomammography, which is an ultrasound uh, tool. I think you are all familiar with sonomammography, where we use the ultrasound to check the breast lumps and then further categorize it. And in case there is a suspicious lump, then you have to do a biopsy of the lump or fine needle aspiration cytology of the lump. That means a needle is put in and the cells are removed for testing. All right. It's not a very invasive thing it just involves a prick on the breast and this can also let us know what is the characteristic of the lump but do not ignore your uh, breasts do not ignore the lumps in the breast don't feel or don't shy away because you don't want to talk about these things to anybody please consult your doctor and your doctor especially your gynecologist can help you and this uh, breast health uh, you know um, what should I say, uh, taking care of breast problems usually involves a gynecologist, a breast surgeon, an imaging specialist or a radiologist. So it's usually picked up by a gynecologist. The imaging specialist can further characterize it. And, you know, the treatment, if needing surgery, will be completed by a breast surgeon. So it's basically collaborative care. With this, I would want you all to ask questions. I will call your name and you can ask your questions. And we can move forward from there. So uh, I think Aishwarya, I will call you first this time. Aishwarya, do you have any questions that you want to ask? Uh, regarding yes, yes. So uh, basically, I wanted to ask if the use of deodorants or perfume sprays can add on to the possibility of uh, getting breast cancer. Okay, why did this uh, kind of a doubt come into you, actually? Because I have experienced uh, a couple of times after I use uh, deodorants, I start getting uh, a feeling of a lumpy uh, uh, texture. And I have uh, come to you also a couple okay. of times to get that <laughs> doubt cleared. Actually, there is no direct causative effect of uh, usage of perfumes or deodorants causing lumps. But, you know, in the environment, there could be certain carcinogens which can play a role, lifestyle uh, and carcinogens which can play a role which can cause cancer. But let me tell you, most of the direct causative factors revolve around factors which increase estrogen in the body. That means if you put on too much of weight after delivery, you become obese, okay? The fat cells can lead to an increase in estrogen in the body. This can result in, you know, can contribute to uh, breast cancer. Using oral contraceptive pills in some individuals can actually predispose to breast cancer. Oral contraceptive pills are nothing but birth control pills. Also, for a long period of time, also, if in case 
you know, you already have a family history of, uh, uh, say, breast cancer. Uh, you must be very, very careful about getting screened at the right time because your screening starts uh, very early. Uh, there have been some questions, especially in women, uh, because nowadays we are actually looking at women who are above 40 who are getting pregnant. All right. Because in we, you know, most of these women undergo IVF. So will IVF cause breast cancer? There have been big studies and that has clearly told us that there is no direct association of IVF treatment per se causing breast cancer. In fact, infertile women, women who have not conceived or women who are nulliparous, that means, I mean, that is women who have not conceived at all who have not given birth to a child. They have actually conceived, but they have not given birth to a child. They've had abortions, okay? And women who have not breastfed, these are women who have a high estrogen level. In fact, pregnancy can protect you from breast cancer because there's a lot of progesterones which are actually produced during pregnancy and that can counter the, uh, you know, that can sometimes prevent this, high estrogen levels that are prevailing in the body. So, in fact, women who have not conceived and who have not breastfed are more prone to breast cancer. So, considering that, IVF does not increase the risk of uh, causing breast cancer because most of these women get pregnant eventually and that is again protective. So, these are some of the myths. So, I don't think, to answer your question directly, I don't think there is any study right now which tells that, uh, you know, there is uh, this perfume or uh, deodorant can cause breast cancer. Yes, it might cause some kind of an irritation on the skin of the breast because it's very close to your underarms. And that can cause some kind of an allergic reaction. That's it. Or it might help you incidentally find a lump because you are kind of reaching out to the lump because of the allergy. But otherwise, there is no direct causation because of perfumes. So thank you so much, Aishwarya. Did I answer your question? Yes, doctor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, I can see Kezia. Kezia, do you have a question? Please unmute yourself. Yes, yeah. yes ma'am. I want to know what is the actual cause of uh, breast cancer? And uh, is it always like uh, starting with the lesion and then uh, going forward as a lump and then the cancer? Or uh, does it show any symptoms earlier? See, as I've been discussing, most of these cancers occur because of a high estrogen level in the body, which is not opposed. Like, you know, if estrogen is very high compared to the progesterone levels. So what happens is uh, in some of these individuals, like most of these individuals have not become pregnant or they have not breastfed. And these kinds of situations can result in high estrogen levels in the body, and this can predispose to breast cancer. There is also a genetic predisposition, that is some of these individuals are positive on these BRCA genes, BRCA1 and 2. You might have, uh, you know, you might be familiar with this famous celebrity, Angelina Jolie, actually. She was positive for BRCA1 and 2, and she got a mastectomy done, prophylactic mastectomy done, because, you know, if she, can, she could have developed breast cancer, all right? So some of these individuals, especially when we actually identify women of the younger age group, you know, like between 35 and 45 who develop breast cancer, we usually do a genetic testing of their families to see whether they have any family members who are positive. This woman, if she is genetically positive, because younger women developing breast cancer gives us a suspicion that she has a genetic predisposition. So when this lady has developed cancer early, is there a possibility that her relative also, I mean, that is her sisters or a mother or somebody also holds this kind of a gene? So we would check in their family. So genetics plays a very important role. And of course, lifestyle, you know, nowadays obesity, especially postnatal, after you have delivered, you tend to put on a lot of weight. And a pregnancy, pregnancy, you know, I've come across some individuals. Recently also I came across a lady who never took her lump very seriously. She showed me a couple of vague reports 